A large natural anchorage called Scapa Flow lies right in the middle of the seven islands of Orkney in Scotland. And although the area is mainly deserted today, it has a long history in naval warfare. The body of water, comprising about 120 square miles, served as a sheltered harbor with easy access to the North and Atlantic Oceans. And its strategic use goes back to 1198, when infamous Viking Earl Harald incurred the wrath of the kings of Scotland and Norway by putting together a large force to resist a rival's claim to half his earldom. However, Scapa Flow's glory days were in the 20th century, as the natural harbor served as the main base for the Royal Navy's battle fleet during the two world wars. Still, not many people know that another navy lies at the bottom of the ocean, surrounding Scapa Flow, part of Imperial Germany's high seas fleet. Scuttled by its own starved and neglected crews in 1919, the operation became the most significant act of self-destruction in naval history. The High Seas Fleet Between 1898 and 1914, the Imperial German Navy grew from a primarily coastal force to the world's second largest fleet. Named the High Seas Fleet, its creator was Captain Alfred von Tirpitz. In a thesis presented to the Kaiser, Captain von Tirpitz argued that instead of defeating a rival in battle, Germany's fleet needed to be capable of inflicting enough damage to disrupt the naval supremacy that the United Kingdom had over the oceans. By the time World War I began, Germany had 31 then state-of-the-art battleships and 10 more in development. However, it soon became evident that they were no match for Britain's mighty power. The German ships, mainly cruisers and commerce raiders, displayed outstanding skill in the early months of the conflict, but by 1915, most had been sunk or taken back to their home ports. Still, while the German army was reaching the end of its endurance by August of 1918, the mighty High Seas Fleet remained virtually intact at its core. Then, on November 11th, the German Empire collapsed at the hands of the Allied forces on the Western Front, and the nation signed an armistice, effectively ending World War I hostilities. However, the country fell into utter disarray following the failed war effort, with a revolution that overthrew the Kaiser and established two opposing republics. In Article 13 of the agreement, the Allied Naval Council decreed that the High Seas Fleet should be confined to port with their supervision. The victors also demanded that ten battleships, six battle cruisers, eight cruisers, fifty destroyers, and the entire submarine fleet be handed over to them for internment in neutral ports. However, no country was willing to host the German vessels. As such, the Allied Council decided that the only safe place for the large naval force was Scapa Flow, which would be looked over by the Grand Fleet itself. Arrival Scapa Flow is a natural body of water located in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. The spot's sheltered waters played a crucial role in naval warfare going back to the Viking era in the 8th century and became the Royal Navy's chief naval base during World War I. After the armistice that ended the conflict, Contra Admiral Ludwig von Reuter, second in command of the High Seas Fleet, was made Rear Admiral in place of Commander-in-Chief Franz von Hipper, who refused to lead his ships into uncertain internment. No matter how repugnant Admiral Reuter believed the mission was, he accepted the post, as he was confident he was still somewhat serving his country. Upon taking command on November 18th, Reuter and his High Seas Fleet departed port, as Royal Navy Admiral Sir David Beatty had told him that the force would meet with Allied escorts on the 21st. The accompanying force consisted of the Grand Fleet, an American battleship squadron, and many representative vessels from other Allied navies, totaling 250 warships. The force became the largest concentration of naval power in the history of mankind. Internment A total of 70 ships of various kinds were handed over in Scapa Flow in January of 1919. British authorities personally oversaw the immobilization of the guns, with most of the expensive equipment being burned, torn, dumped, or even cast overboard. The Allies also insisted on stripping all ships of wireless communication systems, and Reuter and his men were forced to rely on days-old newspapers to keep up. Out of the 20,000 Germans who had brought the ships into internment at Scapa Flow, only 4,565 remained. Meanwhile, the German government, responsible for provisions, faced post-war economic troubles, 
civil unrest, and an allied blockade of ports, and they did the bare minimum. With deplorable conditions aboard the vessels, morale dipped as the once mighty high seas fleet deteriorated and accumulated grime and filth. Moreover, as enemy combatants from a country amidst a communist revolution, the German sailors were kept separate from the British civilians and military personnel. Meanwhile, the Allies continued negotiations on the terms to reach a peace treaty in the first half of 1919. Initially, the British did not want the High Seas Fleet to be given to other nations, and as the months passed, the German crew's mood changed from dejection to resentful defiance. Then, on May 31st, the Germans celebrated the third anniversary of the Battle of the Skagerrak, fought between Germany and the United Kingdom, with both sides claiming victory. Disobeying Admiral Beatty's orders, the crew hoisted the German naval ensign and the revolutionary red flag up their yard arms. Reuters soon learned that the German government had refused to ratify the naval terms of the Treaty of Versailles, even as the November 1918 armistice was nearing its expiration date. Simultaneously, rumors spread that the British were plotting to seize the German fleet. At that point, a bitter Reuter decided to scuttle his own fleet. Only direct orders or news from his country's decision to accept the peace terms would make him change his mind. Paragraph 11. As the delayed negotiations in France made it clear that Germany would never get the high seas fleet back, Admiral Ludwig von Reuter decided to destroy his own fleet before the deadline. While the lack of communication prevented him from knowing that the limit was extended by more days, the British had plans to seize the ships if the German diplomats still hadn't signed the treaty by then. In anticipation of the signing, the British allowed for the repatriation of hundreds of German interns, and Reuter sent his more revolutionary subordinates home. Reuter now had a reliable class of men to carry out one last mission. On the morning of June 21st, 1919, with a calm and clear sky, Reuter appeared on the deck of the flagship Emden light cruiser in full dress uniform, complete with all his medals. Moments before 10 a.m., his chief of staff informed him that five of the British battleships that had been guarding the Germans had just left Scapa Flow to conduct an exercise at sea. It was perfect timing. Shortly after receiving this news, Reuter alerted his fleet to stand by for further instructions. Then, after the remaining vessels departed, Reuter sent out an innocuous sounding signal, quote, Paragraph 11, acknowledge, chief of the interned squadron. When his ships confirmed the message, Reuter sent up another signal, asking to scuttle all the vessels in the high seas fleet. As the German soldiers raised their navy flags from their masts for the first time since arriving at the Scottish harbor, all the ships suddenly began to sink at incredible speeds. By 12.20 p.m., Vice Admiral Sidney Fremantle learned via a wireless message that a sudden scuttle was underway at Scapa Flow. He immediately directed his ships back to the Orkney Islands and ordered the personnel already there to stop the Germans. Still, it was too late, as almost all of the ships were either sunk, sinking, or beached by the time Fremantle returned. Casualties Without Battlefields With orders to take down any Germans who resisted to save the vessels, nine sailors lost their lives, becoming some of the last casualties of World War I. Unsurprisingly, the top brass at the British Admiralty was furious over the events at Scapa Flow. In the afternoon, more than 1,700 German seamen were brought to the British battleships, with direct orders to treat them as prisoners of war for breaking the armistice. As Reuter and several of his senior officers were brought upon British flagship Revenge, Commander Sidney Fremantle denounced their actions as dishonorable, all while the German commander looked at him with an expressionless face. Still, Reuter's decision to go against his own government by sinking the fleet was unsurprising, as former officers saw Germany's decision to sign the Treaty of Versailles as a betrayal of their own people. Of the 70 once powerful German high seas ships, a total of 52 vessels sank to the bottom of the ocean, and despite several efforts to raise them, some still remain under the waters at Scapa Flow. The scuttling of June 21, 1919, became the single most significant loss of naval power in a single day in history, even though no battle actually took place. Reuter's gesture of defiance took away some of the humiliation from losing the war, and the act would remain in the mind of the next generation of German admirals as they laid plans to redeem the mighty high seas fleet honor, albeit under a new, more sinister empire.
the Third Reich. Thank you for watching Dark Seas. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with someone who might like it. And for more incredible stories of the Seven Seas, don't forget to subscribe to this and all our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.